Hi, I'm Sergey Gusev. Today I want to show you how to paint a portrait of a child using acrylics and canvas. So, if you're ready, let's begin. In the very beginning, I want to darken my canvas. Uh, first of all, I think it's easier to paint on a slightly darker surface. So, I'm uh, going to mix white, titanium white, and add a tiny bit of black and create a very neutral grayish tone. I think it's very nice to paint on. If you are using paper or MDF panels, of course, you don't need to use so much of acrylics because um, paper and MDF are pretty smooth and they don't have a lot of textures. So you can just use a bit of acrylics and dilute it with water, give a nice coat or maybe two, let it dry and start painting. So in my case, I have to uh, use more acrylics I'm using a palette knife, as you see. I'm using no water at all. And I'm trying to create a very, very smooth surface. Anyway, let's say now we are ready. We have our surfaces, canvases, panels ready, stained, dry, and we start making a quick sketch. You know that there are different ways to make this initial sketch and I'm sure if you have watched previously some of my video lessons maybe on YouTube uh, you know that sometimes I suggest uh, to use a graphite pencil sometimes I use charcoal sometimes we use pastels so today I want to show you another approach I start painting right away so I start sketching out with acrylics. I mixed black, a bit of red, a bit of yellow. Uh, we get a very neutral color. I would say it's brown color. And some artists like to use umber or burnt sienna maybe for this initial sketch. I also do it sometimes, but in this case I wanted to show you how to paint with a limited palette. So we don't have any umber or sienna or any other browns and I thought why not to mix them uh, use some red uh, yellow and black and you can get a very nice brown for this initial sketch okay so I spent maybe 20 30 minutes to make the sketch uh, it's pretty quick pretty rough I don't have any details yet and I start to block in big light and big shadow I think that it's easier when we start working uh, right away on big spots of light and shadow because when you look at the source picture or when you look at any object around you you won't see lines you will see light shadow silhouette yeah, dark silhouette light silhouette uh, but you won't see lines so it's a lot easier for us for humans to work on the light and shadow but not using a lot of lines especially when we paint again um, as i mentioned in the very beginning i'm using a limited palette meaning that we don't have a lot of colors obviously yeah so only primary colors red blue yellow and white and black i think it's a very good exercise that every artist should should try out at least um, because uh, we can actually mix a lot of different shades using very limited palette yeah you don't have to buy 10 20 colors for a portrait especially uh, for skin color we can use only basic colors that you can see on my palette of course sometimes when we paint a very intense very bright background or maybe clothes or maybe landscape then we need to have some other colors brighter colors but not for face for face we can use very basic ones uh, we need to remember that the face has its own color and its own tone it's not white right so we should be really careful using white don't use too much of it use less and maybe when you get closer to the end you can carefully start adding more white and work on the highlights so in the very beginning be careful and again as you see i'm not just working only on the face i blocked in big spots of light and shadow 
I, I think it's really enough for the beginning and now I'm trying to introduce other colors background uh, hair and head I also quickly worked on the neck and even right now when we have such a quick rough sketch you can see that I'm trying to work on the color yeah so you can see some green in the shadows on the forehead on the side of the forehead on the side surface of the nose uh, on the neck and more red like this you know warm red color on the cheek and uh, again that's what I mean try to see color maybe try to make them even stronger in the beginning if you don't see these colors try to you know do your own interpretation of this poetry try to look for colors otherwise we'll make just a drawing yeah so drawing means that we work only on tonal values when we don't remember about colors in painting colors are really important so remember that every tone has a color you don't have to paint exactly what you see on the source picture uh, usually i say that we need to paint our own interpretation of what we see it means that of course we need to make this portrait looking alike and i would say proportions are pretty important so we need to get the right proportions and resemblance but colors it's something more personal you don't copy colors from the picture because on any picture that i have seen at least colors are usually pretty boring and not really painterly and yeah? not a very picturesque so in my opinion it's better to play around with the colors and make this color difference a bit stronger so of course on the source picture we don't see a lot of green in the shadows we don't see a lot of red on the cheeks we don't see a lot of yellow on the forehead but if you look at the paintings of the old masters or any other big painters that you personally like i'm sure you'll see these uh, really complex vibrant colors especially in portraits that probably we don't see uh, on photographs so of course we as artists should try to make the colors more interesting play around with the colors uh, play around with temperature again put really cool lights and do the shadows a lot warmer and then it's going to create really nice composition of colors on our canvas so again we are using acrylics which means that i'm painting constantly over a dry layer yeah it takes a few minutes for acrylics to dry so i don't know if we can call it ala prima or not probably not because the layers become dry really quickly and of course when you work on the facial details you need a smaller brush because it's a lot more convenient to do soft transitions between half tones with a smaller brush so i'm using a smaller bristle brush it's not synthetic yeah, in this case it's just a smaller hawk hair brush and i would say that when we use um, bristles we have more control over the painting process we have more control over brush strokes we can make them soft and smooth and do the soft transitions but at the same time sometimes we can make a really like wide thick crispy brush stroke they are also necessary and again especially in the lights so don't try to use only synthetics you know i would i would highly recommend you to use most of the time bristles and only at the very end we need to do some really tiny things may I put highlights in the eyes then you can use synthetics so most of the time I'm working with bristles also remember when you do the eyes to add bluish shades into the sclera so sclera the white of the eye is never pure white never usually it's bluish sometimes containing a bit of ochre but again when the light source is cool sclera of the eye is cool too again it means that we need to use white plus ultramarine phthalo blue sky blue blue cobalt or any other cooler color to make our white cooler not neutral white but cool white okay when the eye turns away from the light source 
square becoming warmer so we have to use a bit of red plus yellow if you have ochre you can add a tiny bit of ochre but you know just remember this concept cooler lights warmer shadows i have to always talk about it because it's not easy to understand and i agree that it's not that easy you need to have a lot of practice to see blue cool shades and warm shades so you have to always remind yourself and keep in mind that we're not working only on tonal values yeah it's not only dark and light it's also cool and warm. try to avoid lines in painting we are not using lines we use silhouettes we use spots of light and shadow but we don't need any physical line we do not separate one plane from another plane with lines what's really important in my opinion is work on the edges making edges pretty soft so if you look at this painting we don't have really hard sharp edges in the portrait yeah so when you paint cheeks lips eyes try to avoid working with lines because it's not a drawing we can't work with lines yeah we always need to work with uh, spots of light and shadow right so i would highly recommend you to always soften this transition from one form to another form so when you do the cheeks and when you paint the light on the cheek and then the shadow on the cheek make sure that there is no really sharp edge like there's no physical line that that's dividing the light from the shadow we don't need it we need to create a big solid form of the head of the portrait without any uh, really sharp edges inside and the question is what we want to get from this painting if you want to make a very finished paint maybe it's a commissioned portrait it's one thing yeah if it's just an exercise for you maybe i would suggest to paint more paintings and spending less time on them so you don't have to do it as detailed as i'm going to do it and from the other hand of course you can make it even more detailed you know it's up to you i would suggest you to do shorter studies and just make more like let's say you do three four five a week yeah because you need to collect a lot of experience in color mixing in construction composition and so on i'm not trying to do it hyper realistic of course but i'm trying to uh, do the level that everyone can make uh, on your own so um, i'm seeing some imperfections in the face and the I'm thinking to get back to it and work on it and maybe it's not going to be very visible for you and maybe those small things won't make a lot of sense for you and you won't really understand why I'm trying to spend so much time working on you know on the nose but for me it makes sense so yes sometimes I can't explain everything I do it's just the matter of the final result I'm still not quite satisfied with the backgrounds and I think that for example in the corner it looks in the upper corner it looks a bit too black to me so I'm going to try and then more colors into that area and see how it turns out because from one hand we need to have a lot of contrast and it's always nice when you have tonal difference between the background and the face so if the face is light and the background is light it's sometimes difficult to paint yeah so in this video i'm showing uh, the situation when the face is lighter than the background and that's why it's a lot easier for you to see the colors and the values of the face because you always compare and you see a light face on the dark background if everything is light or everything is dark or er everything is in mid-tone then it's a bit more difficult to work on such a painting so I would suggest you to do the background darker but on the other hand 
not black so i'm kind of thinking that i need to bring some colors into the background maybe even do the values a bit lighter so i think that's it and now i'm going to take a break thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i really hope that this video will inspire you to take your brushes and paints and do either your own paints and paint alongside with me using the same source picture again thanks for watching i wish you good luck with your own artworks and see you in my next tutorial very soon